I got this toy hauler little travel trailer. That's what it is, a fusion. It's a baby fusion. It's just a little in. You can see we got some blistering right here. Looks like we've had a coating put on here, at least on this edge. Someone tried to do something there. And uh, you can see how just distressed out the roof is. If you look, I'm going to try and get the camera in here. See those little, little tiny fractures? That means this roof has failed. So, some people call that spider webbing. To me, it looks like an eggshell when you crack a hard boiled egg. That's what it looks like to me. But it doesn't look like there's anything on the edge right here at all. I'll open that up and we'll see, but more than likely there isn't. Hmm. Looks like someone's done some stuff here. So we're going to obviously tear this off and you can see all the discoloration. You won't have that with the roofs we put down. You won't have that at all. We got a little leak right here already, so that's indicative to me. It's a big word, indicative. That's like a 99 cent word right there. I'm going to see if I can get my pocket knife. You can't really hold yeah. a camcorder in your left hand. What do they got here? They got a piece of, uh, looks like a piece of metal on there. So now what we want to check is to make sure when we go along that shoulder, I want to see where it joins together like right there. I just want to make sure that's tight and it's not going to have any sharpness on there. I got this on here, that's a plus. Uh, very rarely do we see that. So. They got some tape under there too, it looks like. I don't like the way that feels. It just sank in there. Okay. See that knife just sinking in there. Not really pushing that hard. That's how much it pushed in. Ah, that doesn't make you feel so good on that. Let's check it out. I might have just got in between that OSB. We'll check it out, and if it's rotted, we'll, we'll do something with that, for sure. Not sure what all this is. Looks like a patch. <laughs> that is what it is. Slobber some more Dicor on there. Put more on, more on. Now, here's what happened. We had some rot evident. Probably came from there. So we'll say, hey, let's fix it. So they fixed it, and this is the decking. This is the decking that's poked up. You can see how the roofing is all rippled. There's your decking. That's not quite sitting right. Right there. So uh, a couple of things I noticed on a couple of other coaches. That they've, some folks have sent me some pictures of that are probably coming in here. Um, some, there's moisture underneath there. Oh, that's just glue right there. Kind of looks wet almost. But um, that's the plywood sticking up. So we're going to try to get that transition better and make it look professional. I know you got all that water slamming up against there. So we're going to try and smooth that out so the water won't just be bumping up against there. I want it to flow off. So we'll figure all that mess out when we do it. But uh, getting back to what I saw, some of these roofers go up here on your roof. They go, yeah, I can patch it. And they've been patching them with regular roof cement regular shingle roof cement you cannot use that on any membrane at all in fact you can't even use it on fiberglass it's not meant to be what's called a topical a topical is something you can put on top and it'll stay there and it'll be okay the roof cements that they're using are meant to be uh, underneath something else to glue it you cannot just put it on it here's the other problem with it is with the, that roof cement is it has petroleum distillates in it Petroleum distillates will eat any membrane and you wouldn't want that for sure. So if anybody comes up and says, ah, I can patch it for you, and they're thinking of putting on some they're thinking of putting on some roof cement, you punch them in the face. Just do it. Just what up that fist go pow! Get out of here, you dope. You don't even know what you're doing. 
I don't want to charge you some money for it too but we've got a, like I said I've seen a couple of them that have come on over already and um, on the pictures and when I noticed it I was like wow that's crazy you, you don't put it on there it will literally eat the roofing material you'll have what we call an adverse effect you'll have a see that bubble right there mm. yeah, we we'll move the camera a little bit see how it's flexing all right check her out this I'm sure this is that aluminum shoulder that's on there it's just not it just got released somehow see the staples are loosened up on it that's what it is that's why you can see that big gap so that's what that is go around this side get a leak right here runs down all the way to the bottom so that'll get down inside there I don't know how it's terminated down there but the water will get in these little tracks right in here and in there and it'll get inside the track even though it's going down if it's terminated wherever it hits down there if it's got no way out then it's gonna leak this is really short right here in case I want to try to seal that up some of this stuff is just going to shrink over time, especially the rubber stuff. This is just an insert track, and we don't use this anymore. i got some other stuff that works much better. Um, again, we had some trouble with this shoulder. And EPDM rubber shrinks. That's another reason why we don't use it. It will shrink and oxidize. It's really bad. That's the other thing I hate about it. See? It just, you try to, some people want to put coatings on these things. You'd have to get this sterile clean. And I've done commercial roofs for 30 years, and... Not one time did I kick out a roll of rubber. It's problematic. And when you read how to install it, in order to do it, you almost, it has to be surgically clean to get anything to stay. And they know people aren't gonna do it, but they put all those st uh, requirements in there and those, those uh, installation procedures because most guys just wanna get it done. And they'll wash it with gasoline. You can't use gasoline. You gotta use high dollar cleaner, about $25 a gallon. Well, you know, you're doing a big project most people don't want to spend that kind of money to clean all those lap joints and you got to clean it one way clean it flip the rag put some more product on it come back here clean it that's how you do rubber it's just real problematic uh, and with all these protrusions in here like those these anything coming through the roof you have to flash them out and it's real hard to get it flashed out you can't weld it on EPDM rubber cannot weld and also the other issue with uh, that they rely on is just cements everything's got to be glued together so after a while the moisture and contaminants and pollen and dirt and things like that they will affect that that pressure what they call pressure sensitive tape and it'll release so I've never seen one get full term out of it I haven't anyways but and again a lot of it has to do with insulation I'm sure that if you installed it exactly the way they said you would probably get some but it would be so laborious it wouldn't be worth it also if you got a cut in this roof like the cuts we made and like these you can't really put a long-term fix you can see this one's been patched it's been patched several times and it still leaks it's that's just rubber um, it's just not a good product to be putting on these so and although I like the TPO that we use for the the roof system in itself um, I find that a lot of guys when they get into a product it may be rubber for instance or maybe this or maybe that now they want to tote it as it'll do anything it's like you know the holy grail of cure-all but the TPO that we use in this roof I think it's a tremendous product and what I want to do when coaches come in I want to put the best product on and I want to make sure that it's going to last that being said I don't do them on slide outs I do not use a membrane on slide outs we use metal I'll make a whole metal roof if a slide out come in because now the slide outs going in and out in, and there's a sweep gasket and when the slide out comes in and hits that sweep gasket if there's an acorn or something in there there is a chance it could poke a hole in it so if you put a metal roof on it then you you're done you don't have to mess with it it takes us a bit to fabricate them and but we build all the flashing detail and everything into the pan prior before it going up so we're taking a whole bunch of measurements and making sure everything is accurate as heck to make sure it'll get put together right but um, then you never have to worry about it. Whether you have a slide out topper or not, you never have to worry about you know something poking a hole in it. So you see how they got, this is a real thin one. We'll more likely be replacing these. These are cheap, these are just cheap acrylic. So we use a polycarbonate one and those are a lot stronger. So just giving you the overall one. They drive, this is the driver's side here. So you see the same thing, they boogered all this in here. But like I said, this transition, I'm not a fan of that. So I'm gonna try and figure out a better solution for this. 
and see how we can kind of mediate this so it's not so deep. Some of it may be that deep, but if we salvage this anyways, we're still going to be built up a bit. So I'll, um, I'll put the old thinking cap on and see what we can do with it. I've got a couple other ideas already stewing in my head. And if they transpire, then I'll show you, but we'll, we'll try to mediate that for sure. I just don't like the way that transition comes down like that, that abruptly. So it's coming down, and then it comes down again like this. And that's just a, a this in itself is not only a catch just for water sitting there, but also ice and snow and everything else. And if any ice or water gets in there, then it turns to ice, it's going to start opening up the um, seal. And then it'll thaw, and then it'll do it again the next night, then it'll thaw, then eventually you'll have a good sized hole. So I'd like to see if I can figure a better, uh, a better option for that. Uh, obviously we'll be getting rid of this antenna. That's going to go. The crank up antennas, we don't reinstall these. There's a shaft right here goes all the way down into the ceiling and we use that crank to crank it up. It only bites on there about three-eighths of an inch. So even if I try to build it the most shallow curb I could think of, that crankshaft is going to be up inside the ceiling cavity and you won't ever get that back on. Besides that, those are usually worthless anyhow. You know, these don't come in that well. He's got a new one in there that we'll be putting on. So this is another problem here. If you have one of these, make sure they are sealed. This one looks like someone slobbered a whole bunch of stuff on it, so it does look like it's pretty good. And even on the inside like that. So that's that's uh, one of the better ones I've seen. But you definitely want to do that because the water will trickle down this wire, and then when it does, it'll trickle down inside there and it'll get in the ceiling. And that may have started it too, because you can see it looks like there was a repair here. And there was a repair there around that vent. It looks like uh, over there as well. So it looks like someone went around this a, a while back and um, tried to see if they could stave off any damages. And they may have done a pretty good job of keeping it out, even although I don't like all this. So when we get the roof up, we'll see. Um, sometimes there's other stuff we don't notice until we actually take the roof up. But overall, it sounds pretty well. Uh, we did one before, and we pulled up the antenna. It was a uh, hideout. We pulled the antenna up. And it was actually a 2017 hideout. But when we pulled the antenna up, we noticed that there was water underneath it. Well, we pulled the decking up to take a peek, and there was still standing water in there. So you can go watch that video on there as well, and you'll see what we're talking about. So some other companies would look at this and go, hey, you know, we can spray over it. Well, if you watch that hideout, they would have probably sprayed over it because the roof deck, when we hit it, sounded pretty solid. But then when I saw that moisture, it just kind of concerned me. And if it was mine, would I want to know what's in there? So... I pulled that off of there and then we investigated and found out there was standing water in there and we had to get blower dryers in there, mold kill and so forth. But we were able to get it before it soaked in and ruined the ceiling. So that's a plus side. But um, go watch that video. That's why I'm not a proponent for coating systems. I've done a whole bunch of coating systems. But on something like this, you probably want to tear it off, see what's going on, and then put a good roof on it. You just don't want to cover up something you don't know what's underneath. Especially as expensive. These are expensive to put on, I'll admit it, but there's a lot of labor involved. So why would you want to do it again and find out you've got underlying issues that were not addressed when the roof was open? So, now you can see how shallow the air conditioner is and all they use is that little foam gasket up underneath there. See if I can get a better angle at that. See that little foam gasket right there? That's it. That's what's keeping you dry. And the funny part about it is that isn't even a one piece stamped out. It's not one big square stamped out. It's little pieces, and then this leg is glued to the front one, and then the back one's glued to the sides. So once that releases, then you start getting water in there. Uh, you really should be changing those every two years anyways. That's what they say. The way we do our roofs, it's almost moot because we have them up on curves and there's flashing and counter flashing and everything. So, but it still probably wouldn't be a bad idea. And then you can see how low this is. So any water that gets down inside these, or even any dirt and pollen and debris, on this air conditioner, for instance, you get dirt, pollen, debris. You can see the twigs, little bits of bark, and things like that that may get up in there like this, you know, as they get blown across the roof and everything. There's a drain in there. Now, it's going to want to drain, and if it doesn't find a place to drain, then it will drain up into the pan and leak back into the roof. So, you can see all this fracturing right here, and that's from condensation coming down right here. If it just stands on there for a while, that's that's pretty significant right there. So, and again, you can see all of these other discoloration and just this stuff just never never looks well. But it's cheap. It's real cheap. The the RV's motto is get them built, get them out, get them sold. They put this roof on in about 30 minutes. 
kid you not 30 minutes so some of the other things we just got this in the bay so but we will be putting some protection on here on the uh, the awning we do have it on the door we've got a couple of drops in there we're gonna have to put inside so we can walk around in there and not dirty up the coach and then we're gonna be looking at other things like this right here on this awning rail we're right here it won't take nothing we gotta put a some caulking here anyways when we finish so it it doesn't take nothing for us to do it so we'll be putting that on there I'd hate for someone to drive out with a brand new roof they go hey I got a leak they come back we're looking we're looking we can't find it we go oh yeah it's coming from here you know and it takes whatever you I mean I could literally run a power caulking gun down this thing and well I don't know maybe 30 seconds literally so for 30 seconds we'll do it it's not a big deal you know that's just some of the things that we look for while they're in here because again I don't want any underlying issues same with this back one we'll be looking at that we we'll putting some caulking on here we do all the lights the stuff that's coming from here here now if it's on our work order then we will go around the whole entire coach it's just not in our work order to go around and do all of the windows and things like that so we want to get anything down and I let folks know that you know these coaches need to stay sealed they need to stay sealed so you need to go around every little like window you can need to go around like this vent right here you need to go around that you need to go around the light any latches anything where water may hit it and it's screwed to the side or there's any sort of lippage like that like the windows then you need to have it cocked so well this is our fusion and it's just a little toy hauler and i like this one a lot better than the ultralight if you look in our uh we've got another video called ultralight it's really a super light but um someone had mislabeled it so we can't change the the title to the video but um anyhow that one was a toy hauler like this but we had to replace the whole entire roof and ceiling that one was quite a task so well like i said we'll uh, keep you updated the next step that we got to do is tear obviously tear all this off get everything done you know first step getting everything covered tear the roof off investigate what's going on and we may see what the decking's doing and see if it's tight we've got to make sure of that so we'll keep you posted on all this uh, again i want to make sure when they roll out there's not going to be any issues on it you know and now we're working on this other one over here uh this one is a cameo and we replaced the whole deck but what we did over there all that's all glued and screwed that's all the new fresh decking over there so we've got all that glued and screwed that fan he had some rot in the back and what we did is we pulled the insulation back and everything we got a fan blowing down there and we sprayed it with mold kill so sometimes they're in here a little longer than they have to be or because of the repairs and i don't want to send these out and try to just push them we don't do that type of work here we don't push them out for the sake of getting them out to get another one in here that's not the way we do things so it, some folks call up and they say hey how long is it going to take and i give you a pretty good idea but um sometimes we're off the mark a bit you know sometimes we are if we have to do some extra work so uh, just keep that in mind if you bring your coach in here we do the best we can but my main goal is make sure you don't have any roof issues again so if it takes another week or two before you get into the shop so we can do a real quality job then i think that's much better than trying to rush it out the door and then you have underlying issues that weren't resolved or you had a roof that wasn't put on properly and you have issues with that if you want that type of service you can go to almost any local rv center that doesn't know a thing about roof systems and structurality <laughs> we'll be back we got the roofing all off of this little toy hauler so one of the concerns i had mentioned it earlier is this here Let's see if you can get down maybe you can see it a little better but it really has quite the the drop right there so we're wondering you obviously somebody worked on this this is a little there's a fresher piece obviously and also it doesn't match this so but we're gonna take this part here and we're gonna explore it but some of the problems typically is because this if somebody re, if somebody replaced it they may have done it too high and that's why you're getting this slope coming down so we're gonna check it all out we may have to remove a truss and get the slope a little differently so we don't have that's going to be basically a water ponding issue right here I don't know if you can see it I'm kind of sometimes cameras pick some stuff up sometimes they don't but you can see like how this this has a heck of a belly on it like that and I don't want it to sit there like that so it just be problematic so that's what we're working on 
we'll let you know what we find there, Pilgrim. We got some rot on this here. Right in the front there, you can see it. Seems like it goes over that way. Just kind of, now this, this seems okay, but this seems rotted. Well, this is at a different elevation. That's where the problem was. Transition was different when they did this here. They just screwed it down to here and it actually needed to come up about an inch or so anyways. So we'll straighten that out. However, on the other side, Yeah, the cracks in the file on there's another one down there it's because of the way it was pressed in here see right here that's where that is right there this uh, transition piece but it wasn't meant to go there and underneath there if I can show you <laughs> there's a piece of wood there's a piece of wood right up underneath there which kind of stressed it out see it but now most of this is rotted, but over here, this is, looks well. Isn't that weird? This is rotted, where it's opposite on the other side. We're going to take all that apart there, and we're going to investigate all this, because there's no sense in putting it back together until it's, you know, rotten is fixed. And then we'll, we'll accommodate for this angle, whatever we need to do with it. But it's just kind of peculiar, because I've never seen these all pulled apart like this. See all this fraying? Then uh, what I am seeing is little particles of foam. I'd almost think that they stripped all of this of foam, but that would be a heck of a lot of work. That really would, unless there was just foam in this corner or something, and they took that out to do the work. Don't know. So, but that's what I've been looking at. Trying to figure it out. Because that would be a whole lot of work. And these don't look like they're new or as new as you know like that lumber you can tell that looks newer than this even though it's still rotted but you kind of understand what i'm saying here all right well like you said well we're going to get going on that investigation on that front end where the rod is and we'll be back okay so we got this pulled back and now you can see how much rot we got the one two you got three pieces here uh, four pieces here, so we're going to probably have to get rid of some of this. Some of it's holding up a cabinet, we'll loosen that up, and then we'll find out what we have to do afterwards. And then I'm um, going to try to do our best not to take out more than we have to. This is the sheathing that is on the face side. On the underside of this is the basically wallpaper, or the, the vinyl is glued to it. Just a thin piece of vinyl to give you your ceiling texture. So that's on there, but you can see we've got a lot of a lot of water in there and some of it looks a little damp now only because we soaked it down with some mold kill but um, we're going to uh, get some more over there so we're going to end up taking these out and then I don't know if I can get around that side there supporting this see if I can do the limbo and get under here you can see this whole corner here is blown out it's just rotted so that needs to be taken care of. This is aluminum right here. This piece is aluminum, aluminum. And then we get the wood that comes up here. So we'll have to put a new piece in, at least on here. We have to do that because we won't have nothing to screw this corner mold to. So that has to get done. And then, like I said, pull the rest of it out. So let's uh, see what we can do. And uh, we will let you know. Now let's go up here in the front and take a look at what we got going on. So we dug all that stuff out. So now we're just digging that out nice and clean and clean all this up. All this flakiness will get off of here and then we may have to, that's pretty loose. So we'll add some strength in here in a minute. Uh, we'll put something on there, laminate something to it, maybe some rigid board or something. We want to make sure it's all clean. It looks dry. We just want to get all the rot out of there. That's what we're doing over there. We're digging out all that rot. So we got new pieces going in and new frame up. Then we got to find some insulation. That would be nice. Okay, so we got everything fixed. So what we did is made a new truss. We gave it some camber and then it's going to feather out to nothing. And then we got it all glued. We added some strength to the ceiling because the ceiling didn't have very much strength. 
because of the, the the actual rot that was in there so we glued it you can see how much glue we got and everything so and then also this one went back in here to support the cabinets and then this is here for the the, the actual decking that we're going to put down right now so we're going to get it down and then we're going to uh we're going to get it fastened in so what we're doing now is we're double checking all these make sure there's bushings in here so these are these little red-headed bushings right here and what we're doing is we're putting them in the side there's a ferrule see that metal ferrule well it's got a burr in it you need these to protect it they don't do that this one has one here it's a different style so that's what we we're doing put them in there if not it'll compromise the wire these are actually electrical code but RVs don't fall under any of that so these are real cheap little pennies literally they won't put it they won't even put an extra few cents into these things so we had the aluminum shoulder the metal shoulder that came over this way right here aluminum and uh, what we're gonna do is put some stock in here then we're gonna bring the deck over a little bit and I'm gonna make another little piece to fit in here so it'll be all flush we'll get rid of that and then it'll kind of tighten it up a little better we got the front all squared away and uh, this just from them working on the right here you can see someone's already worked on it previous to us a couple of cracks in there and we're gonna epoxy that back together and uh, that'll get as you can see we put a whole bunch of booger glue on there a whole ton of it so uh, and then you saw how we framed all that out got all the insulation in there as well and we got to put yet I think one more piece down in that wall and uh, it's a small piece so we're, we're gonna get that as well and like I said these these ones have the protection right there but the other ones don't they don't have them so we put them all in all of these and over there on the other side there's the phone. Quiet on the set, quiet on the set. We're in full production mode. All right, just give you a rundown of what we've done so far. It probably looks about the same from the last clip. But uh, we got the shoulders on. We also put a piece of stock in here. It runs all the way down to kind of give some strength to this corner. A couple of things that I noticed was these are the uh, holes that they had, but there was nothing there. It was just shot into the siding and even the screws that they use on the termination bar that runs down here it really was only screwed into the siding so we put some stock in there you can see it i didn't get up here quick enough with the camera but it's right there runs all the way down the whole the whole lamp on both sides there so we got all that and then once we put this other piece on here we put these back on but i wanted to glue them on because they were so wide and i didn't want them to start getting flippy floppy when we put the uh we're going to put some protective strips on here as well so we'll get those on there we're just going to clean it up a little bit and then we'll put the protective strips, the buffer strips, I call them on here. And then um, we got all this squared away here. We epoxy the patch over there. We had to get some epoxy on it to get that squared away. And you can see how much how much glue we use, some adhesive in there. And that's what all this is too. It's just a different color. So we glued all that and pinned it all in and everything. So it's about ready to roll to put these strips on. One of the other things that I saw that I really don't like is this joint right here. It looks like the piece that we put on there is just a shade higher. We're going to run a sander over it real quick and uh, get it to kind of seat a little better so I don't have that much of a ripple. But you can see how we pulled all this back. This is going to work normal. This is a normal function for this roof. And it's also raised up in the center so it'll have a little slope so the water won't hang there like it did. And then obviously it'll all be sealed up and whatnot. So that's what we're working on right now. But well, we're trying to make some progress. Now what we're going to do now, we've already got the glue on there. You can see that sheen. Let me get some glue on here. You can see that sheen. And now we are going to proceed to roll. We're going to roll it over. I want to bring your in over. Try and go even on this. I'm thinking. Check it out. All right. 
so when we rolled it over we wanted to make sure we didn't have a, a wrinkle up there that's what we were working with so we went and got this balance roller so now what we'll do is just kind of keep smoothing it out smoothing it out you got a, a lot of transition going on here it's going straight then it drops down like this in the front so that's what we're working with we're going to take the balance roller and push those wrinkles out and then we flip this side glue it do the same thing all right so now we got it rolled out and we got the big roller on there so we're gonna squash it all down and get it looking nice and pretty what is that yeah this guy definitely needs a raise or something he's got mismatched stocks he works so hard this guy he works so hard that he can't do his laundry so we paid a girl to do his laundry that's what he thought so she threw it in the all his dirty laundry in the dryer with a dryer sheet <laughs> and it had a nice nice floral body odor smell <laughs> that's funny Funny when you put the shirt on, that's funny. <laughs> and mix them all together, underwear and all. <laughs> that's funny. All right, we got the roofing down as you can see. Got our curves mounted, all our curves are all mounted up here. And then what we got to do is we got to go back and we got to heat weld all this. That's what we'll have to do. Get it all in there. Obviously, we showed you all the front, how we got all that together. So it's in the making. It's a getting there. I got an antenna to put in over here somewhere too. I gotta go fetch one, I guess. The one he got did not work. It's just a radio antenna. So we'll get that in there too. And then uh, we also have a... There it is. So on these new antennas... Well, I shouldn't say the new ones. I call them boomerangs. They're just flat and they look like a boomerang or a bat wing. But look at this. This weird looking curve assembly that I fabricated. The reason why it's like this, because those antennas need to sit fairly square. And it goes down here somewhere. But you can see, now that I put it like that, this is a little more shallow than that end, keeping this level. So that'll uh, accommodate to make it level, or within three degrees of level. And then uh, we can just mount the antenna right there or whichever where it goes. But you get my point. So that's what that one is. See, just all the custom stuff you're not going to get at an RV center. You're not going to. And if you need to change that antenna out, all they're going to do is put that down there. It's going to be crooked. Then the antenna doesn't work the way the manufacturer intended it to work. So we still got a couple of plumbing boots over here we got to get in. And... Uh, but this is what we specialize in, is roof systems. Roof systems, rebuilds, reconstruction. We can do virtually anything over here. Uh, even if it was an air conditioning system, we can do all of that over here. You just let us know what you got going on. But again, when you go to another place, uh, they, they don't have the experience like we do in regards to roof systems and structurality. Not nearly. So, uh, I've been doing commercial roofs for 30 years. Uh, this the, the biggest problem we find is not even so much the roof system itself is pulling everything together like we showed you up there in the front how bad it was and how it came down so we had to reconstruct all that and then they had to again fabricate all those trusses and they had to get shaved down and kind of graduate down so they would work properly you know and that's what we do here to make sure it comes together because it was a serious dip right in here if you remember that so um, if not I guess you could rewind the, the video to see but um, now this is nice and smooth, so the water isn't going to get trapped up in here like it was before. That had a really big gap, so we're going to, again, try to make that transition as smooth as we possibly can so that water will roll. But what we also did is we gave this a shade of a crown in here, so the water should still trickle down. You don't need very much to get water to flow. Uh, you know, you could just tip uh, an eighth of an inch is going to get water to roll in the, in the direction you need. It's all about your need. All right, let's get to work. All right, our fusion is complete. Got that groovy decal right there. Look at that nice logo emblem. So I take an X-Acto knife and I cut out all these letters. Just like that. And then I heat weld them all to this piece. And then we heat weld it there. So you can find a lot of information in RVRoofInstall.com. Month, year we put it on. So now when the coach comes back, we can monitor it. And make sure it's doing okay the way it should. 
So uh, we got obviously we got the curbs all down. Everything's all heat welded. We got those stands at the back. Give that AC just a little bit of balance. We also got the front flashing detail. So water comes down the side. It'll hit that flashing detail and we get up underneath. The counter flash is our counter flash right here. Every one of these curbs have the counter flash. So you're flashing here. There's your counter flash. And we designed this. We'll take that off. We don't need it there. It was just to kind of hold it in place while we loaded it. But uh, all this is all welded. The whole bit right here. So this is all welded in there. It's not just this edge. So they made this custom curb. I think we showed you that. The curb that we designed for this. Because it's got to stay kind of level. And all the repairs have been made on there. And again, you can see the counter flash on here. And on, on this one as well. It's got covers on there. You need to, should, should and need to have covers on there. So, and when the water comes across, you get caught in a heavy storm. That water may want to try to ride up a little bit, even if it's blowing heavy rain. It's just to make it go around. Keep it away from the, the curb there. Keep it away from the vent. And uh, hey, you got a piece of tape on over here. We got to get that right so, there. Yeah. Yeah, saying on the front. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got two strikes of caulking all the way down here. We put two strikes on there. If you run a tube of uh, caulking, you start you know, squeezing along, you'll hear pop, crackle. You just injected an air bubble. So we put two strikes. Or the chance of having one ear pocket over another, probably slim to none. So that's why we do it. It's more of a precaution and a prudent measure. We also went around the top of the awning rail right here. And then uh, we'll probably end up going around the top of that window. We did it on a couple of the other sides over here. As you can see, we went around this one. All of this, two layers, all the way across. We went around the lights. All the lights back here. And we went around the window, around here. That's what he's doing right here now. That fancy caulking device. We're going to pull it out. We're going to run a strike all the way down, even though we didn't pull all this apart. We're still going to run a strike all the way down the bottom, and then uh, we'll do the same on the front. So, you uh, 60 mil. This is a 60 mil commercial roof membrane. It's a structured membrane. But uh, let me sneak back over here and explain our little boots. So our boots right here, all heat welded in. And then if this cap gets pulled off, it's still sealed up underneath there. You're not getting anything in this cap. So the. Uh, same flange design. One of the things we did with this design is I made this recession on here. What it does is it comes out and dips down and comes back around. I had to make a special tool for all of these. But anyhow, that makes that. And it prevents anything from hitting here just trying to roll back. I'm trying to keep as much water off of this as possible. Now you may ask why we don't have caulking all over this thing. We don't do that. It's What we do is put enough caulking up underneath and then when you put the screw in, it'll leave that ring around it, plus the adhesive caulk that we use will screw into the frame, and it'll literally adhere into the frame. So we don't, don't slobber it on, on there as a rule. I don't like that. So we try to minimize. I just think it looks cleaner, in my opinion. So, But uh, let me see if I can find this uh, sample that I've got here. This is a sample of the roofing. And you may be able to see that little fiber right here against my dirty hands. This little fiber right here, that's a structured membrane. There's a mesh on the back, or in, embedded in it, shall I say. But you can see it more clear from the back. You can see that weave in there. That's where it gets its strength, resists impacts of hail and uh, tree branches. And if a tree branch did poke a hole in this, then we can take the same material and just do a heat well patch, much like we did here. So that's an easy fix doesn't affect your warranty just heat weld it right in it's not a problem and then the uh, but this is the same product as a 60 mil TPO this is the same product you're gonna find on a commercial building this is JS brochure on the Everguard that's what we use Everguard TPO and you can find more about this at GAF.com but it goes into YTPO and GAF goes into some studies on here and um, also goes into the types of membranes they have and whatnot so this is a good brochure but what we're using is a 60 mil 
TPO, it's a fully adhered smooth TPO is what we're using. And then they also have, this is just mechanically attached, but this is all blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, those are for different applications. They show you different, you know, drill faster. This is just a brochure. We've got a whole bunch of them that we like to leave with folks. But you can see how they use a big roller to roll it down right here, and that's what we do. Obviously, this is huge for a bigger building, but what we use is adequate. So, and this one here is a uh, three different colors. So you got the sand, you got the gray, and then you got the white. So if you want a sample, just give us a call, 423-475-7663, or you can go to our website, and you can get all our information, contact information, right there at the foot of the page. But it's real simple. It's just contact us at rvroofinstall.com and uh, you just request a sample and we'll be glad to send them out for you. Uh, we appreciate you watching. If you got any questions at all, just give us a call. You know, we try to help folks out the best we can and kind of navigate what they should or shouldn't do with some of their problems that they have and um, you know, a good remedy to fix them for the long term. You, know, you don't want to do these things twice. It's a lot of work. As you've been watching all the videos, you can see there's a lot of work in all of these and we just want to do it correctly the first time so we don't have any issues. Thanks for watching.